What is going on guys, Steven here and welcome back to another Chinese product review. Now today we're going to check out some awesome mini PC from Share ThinkLine China. The model I got here is the X3700 mini ITX PC, which currently retails for only about $150, less or more depending from the shop you buy it. And also when we open up our shop in January, we'll probably sell those mini PCs because they are very cheap and very reliable. Now what can you do with such a mini PC? So first of all, those PCs have a very low power consumption, which is usually below 20 watts, and that makes them perfect as station PCs or small media servers. Also the performance improves from model to model. In this we have an Intel Celeron 1037U CPU, it's Ivy Bridge running at 1.8 GHz, 2 GB of DDR3 RAM, integrated Intel HD graphics, and an HDD or SSD depending on the configuration and the price. And also it comes with a lot of connectors, it comes with Wi-Fi integrated, so it's perfect as a living room PC, TV media center, office computer, education computer, or even an industrial control PC. So this model here is capable of running Linux and Windows, and the low power consumption of about 17 watts makes it the perfect server, although the performance is not that high. Now, you can find the product link down below in the description, you can check out the details, also have a look at the new i3 models, because this is a quite outdated model with the Celeron CPU, so maybe it's better to go with an i3 model, because they were faster and they're getting quite cheap right now. And now let's do a quick unboxing and let's have a look at the mini PC, so let's go guys. Okay guys, so this is the box which I have received from Share ThinkLine China, and now let's open it up and let's have a look at the mini PC, so there we go guys. And this one here is the black model of the X3700, and you see, it comes with a lot of accessories. Now, let's get the mini PC out of the box. So yeah, this little box here is the whole PC. You can already see here the power button on the left side, several USB ports on the right side. We have here at the top ventilation holes, and you can see the fan, so it's active cooled. Here at the bottom, we can see the model number, it's the X3700 comes with a total power consumption below 20 watts, so that's really great. You can also see here the mounting holes. So those mounting holes are to mount the mini PC on a wall or on the back side of a monitor. Here we have all the connectors, so let's start here at the left side. So here we got power input, HDMI output, video output, an Ethernet port if you don't want to use Wi-Fi which is integrated, two big USB 2.0 ports and a headphone jack to connect and headset of speakers. And here at the front side we have the power button and two extra USB 2.0 ports. Okay, so basically that was the mini PC and let's have a quick look at the accessories. Now this little rail is to mount the mini PC on the back side of a monitor. And this is really great because you can build your own all-in-one PC. Then here we have a short user manual, so this just tells you the basics, how to turn it on, how to connect all the cables, very easy to use. Then here we got a CD. Now this CD includes the drivers of the mini PC. So if you reinstall Windows, you can find all the drivers on this CD. But this device doesn't come with a CD drive. So you have to go to a different PC and just copy the drivers from the CD to an external media or something. Now let's have a look at the power supply. And this one here is just a simple AC-DC adapter. And you see it outputs about 36 watts. The power consumption is below 20 watts, so you still have a buffer. And this one here should already come with the correct cable, so the correct connector for the power socket in your country. And you don't have to use an adapter for this. Okay, so basically that's it. Here we have another plastic rail for the mounting system. And also we have several other plastic parts and screws. So you can easily mount that mini PC on the back side of a monitor. Last but not least, we have a screwdriver to remove the top cover. And we will do this at the end of this video so you can see what is inside of this mini PC and also here some other plastic caps. Now this is everything which you can find in the package and what I will do now is just set up this mini PC and then we'll have a closer look at the X3700. So let's go guys. Okay guys, now it just took me about two minutes to set up the whole system because everything is pre-installed. You just have to connect your power connector, video output and your mouse and keyboard and there you go. Then you can press the power button and when it lights up green you know it is up and running. Then the plastic case here feels pretty good and you also hear the fan running so it starts after a couple of minutes and the rotation seems to be very high of the fan. 
but it's not that noisy and it actually sounds pretty good and also the plastic case looks kind of good for an $150 PC. Now let's have a look at the connectors. So I have used almost all the connectors, so let's go quickly through them. Here at the left side you can see the power connector, it's just a simple DCN connector. Then here I'm using HDMI output, I'm not using VGA because I also want to have sound transmitted over HDMI. But you can also use the 3.5mm headphone jack, which you can see right over here. Now I'm also using the Ethernet connector over power line adapters, but I can also use Wi-Fi, so it works both perfectly on this device. One USB port is used here by my keyboard, and yeah, one is free here. Okay guys, so it's just as simple as that. Windows is pre-installed, you just have to connect all the cables, and then you can start it up. But before we check out Windows, let's have a look at the BIOS, so let's go. So we're now here in the BIOS, and I was really surprised that you can edit so many things in the BIOS of a mini ITX PC. But let's start here at the main tab. Here we can see it is running an Intel Celeron CPU, which is running at 1.8 GHz, and it's on dual core, and it got 2 GB of DDR3 memory. Now let's go to the advanced tab, and here we can see CPU configuration. And no, you won't find overclocking in this BIOS, and that's good, because you will blow up this piece of shit if you want to OC it, because the cooling system is very small, and also the fan is running on its limit, so please don't even try to overclock it. So you can also find here a lot of other configurations, but let's have a look at the SATA configuration. We have here one port, and one 500GB hard drive is assigned to that port and it's at the bottom of the mini PC, so it's a really big hard drive in that small case, that's pretty cool. Then here we also got flash BIOS, power surge protection, so you have a lot of features in here. Also monitoring, and here you can see the CPU fan speed is 3200 RPMs, and that's a really high rate here. And you also hear it a little bit, and the CPU is currently at about 50 degrees. So you see, overclocking wouldn't be a good idea, since the CPU is already running on 50 degrees. Then here we also have security, we have different boot settings, and last but not least, save and exit, and that's what we'll do right now. And now we're going to boot Windows 7, and let's have a look on how it performs in Windows, so let's go guys. We're now here in Windows 7, it's the 64-bit version, I'm using now Camtasia to record the screen because it's easier for you to see everything. And here in the right bottom corner you can see this copy of Windows is not genuine. So you have Windows pre-installed, but not a genuine version, and you still have to enter a product key. So let's go to the control panel and system, and here we can see it is Windows 7 Ultimate, Service Pack 1, 64-bit operating system, but you still have to activate it. So we can also check out here the performance index, it's 4.5, and the lowest part here is the graphics unit, because this one here is integrated in the CPU, it's the Intel HD graphics, it's using shared memory and it's slow as hell, but it is capable of running Minecraft even in low FPS, but we will later do a little gaming test. Okay, then here we can see on the computer, it comes with um, three partitions. We have two 200 gigabyte partitions and one main partition of about 60 to 70 gigabytes, which has Windows pre-installed. And that means, yeah, we have a 500 gigabyte hard drive included in a little mini PC and that's really awesome. But you can also buy an SSD if you don't need that much memory, that would be faster and also maybe more reliable. Okay, now let's have a look at the Wi-Fi connection. So we can go here to the adapter settings and I'm currently now connected to both. So let's just see Wi-Fi is working, also some pretty good signal. But I can deactivate Wi-Fi right now. And then we can have a look at the local area connection, so this should also work. And yeah, we have internet access. So let's open up the Internet Explorer and let's see how fast it opens up pages and if it lags or not. So let's just go to my forum, which is chinadevices.com. And there we go, so here it is. And it loads the pages a little bit slow, but I think that's my internet connection because I'm using that power line adapters. And sometimes those power line adapters are really a pain in the ass and slow as hell, especially if you live in a house which has some old power circuits. And yeah, it is working as you can see, browsing feels pretty okay, and you can also use it for Skyping or something, so it's a pretty good PC if you just browse the internet, if you do some work, for instance in Excel or Word, and you don't need um, that much performance for gaming and you want to save energy. 
So we're now here in Excel, for instance, and you can see also calculations pretty fast. It doesn't really lag or something, so you can definitely work on that thing. And I wouldn't have a problem with that to just write a text in it or just calculate something. So that feels pretty good on that mini PC. And we will also later have a look at the gaming performance, which is quite low on that thing. So for now, we will just have a look at CPU set, because here we can also once again see which CPU is it running, and it also tells us some more things about the CPU. So let's just go and let's have a quick look at that. Now once again we can see Intel Celeron 1037U, maximum TDP is 17 watts, and the maximum speed is 1.8 GHz, but it also slows it down to save some power when you don't need it. Then here we can see Mini ITX mainboard, we have 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and the DRAM frequency here is 666.5 MHz. And we have two memory slots, or at least CPU set tells us that. Maybe we just have one, so I haven't checked it. And here we can also see graphics is the Intel HD graphics, which is a really piece of shit. But to know more about the graphics unit, we can also open up GPU set. And there we should also see the shared memory and all that stuff, and we can see how fast it really is. So let's just have a quick look at GPU set. Okay, so let's just wait a couple of seconds until it loads up, and here it is. Now here you can see once again Intel HD graphics, but here you can see some more information. Like we just have six unified shaders, we only have a pixel filter rate of 0.7 gigapixels per second, which is really slow, and also the GPU clock for instance is just 350 megahertz, so that's very slow. But you see the GPU only drains 0.5 watts and it got 60 megabytes dedicated and uses the rest of the memory from the RAM. So it's designed to consume very low power but it doesn't have much performance. And now I will run a benchmark and after the benchmark has finished, so I will shut off the recording because it would affect the benchmark. And after the benchmark has finished, we will just discuss the results, so let's go. Okay, so the benchmark has finished, and we have two benchmark results, an OpenGL benchmark and a CPU benchmark. And now we are comparing the OpenGL, which is the graphics benchmark. And you can see the Intel HD graphics isn't really better than the Intel HD graphics 4000, so we already have about 8.5 FPS. And the Intel HD Graphics 4000, which is a little bit better, just scores 9 FPS, combined with an Intel i5, which is faster. And the next one would be here in the ranking the GT620, so a much better GPU, a dedicated GPU, which will also double the FPS. So you can see a um, very low benchmark score for the GPU. But also for the CPU, you can see um, here the, um, the difference between the i5 and the Celeron CPU is much higher because the i5 has got 4 threads and the Celeron CPU has got 2 threads. So you can see the performance is just half of the Intel i5, but um, the GPU performance is almost the same. But those benchmark values are just theoretical values which should tell you something about the performance, but we don't know how it performs in real tasks. And now we'll try to play back some 4K media to see if it can handle that and if it does a pretty good job as media server. Now, unfortunately, it is a little bit slow at 4K movie playback. So you can see that's a 4K movie and it lags a little bit. Just the video lags, the audio not, and the CPU activity is at 100%. So you can definitely see that it is lagging when you try to play back 4K. Now, it maybe would be better with Linux or something, because yeah, um, it is running Windows, and we all know also Windows drains a lot of performance. So I have Android um, 4K players, which don't have that much power, but they can play back the movies better. So you definitely see this one here isn't that good for 4K movie playback. So if you want something more powerful, also for movie playback, then have a look at the i3 models, because the CPU is much more powerful, and you can definitely see here in the task manager that the CPU is limiting here. So yeah, but for full HD movie playback, it's quite okay, it does a pretty good job in full HD movie playback, but definitely not for 4K, because yeah, it is lagging here. 
So that was the media playback test, not that good for the Ceron model, it's definitely better to get the i3 model for a home media server, but let's have a look at a little gaming test just for casual 3D games like Minecraft. And you can see it is running, but I had to go to the options and reduce the effects and all that stuff. And with Optifine it would be much better, but for now we are getting something like 30 FPS as you can see right over here. So something between 30 and 40 FPS and it is running, but if you play multiplayer with a lot of people and if you set the rendering distance to a higher value then yeah, it is lagging and will drop to something like 20 FPS. So definitely not something for gaming, but for casual games if you just play, I don't know, browser games or just some very low 3D games like those puzzle games or Starcraft 1 or something, then it's definitely okay, but don't expect that you get a gaming machine from a mini PC. And this is definitely something for low power consumption, office use, media use, or whatever. Okay, so that was a little gaming test here in Minecraft. As I've said, it is running, but yeah, not that good as expected. And now we are at the end of this video, and I hope you have seen what a mini PC like this can handle and now let's quickly remove the cover and let's see how the internals look like and if they look well built or not. With the screwdriver which was included in the package I could remove the top cover and now we can have a closer look here at the internals and it is also possible to upgrade the hard drive, upgrade the RAM but you see it's um, a little bit stuffed in here. Here we have the heatsink with the fan and you see it's a very small thing and it gets quite hot. Then here we have the SATA port and the SATA cable goes here to the bottom and I think at the bottom does the hard drive located because here we got a little bit of space. Here we have an additional PCB with some USB ports, the Wi-Fi module which can be replaced. We have here a mini ITX port basically in a plastic case. Here the BIOS battery, a lot of connectors and also here some other connectors to upgrade things. So it's really an ITX system in some really small case. So it's a really small and compact thing which um, has everything which a PC should have. Okay, so basically that was the mini ITX system. Then here I also have one cloud PC. And those things are called cloud PC because they need a host PC. So basically you can use that mini ITX PC which I have reviewed in that video as an host PC for several of those client PCs um, for remote control or as a main server or whatever. And I will show you in the next video why it's very cool to use those client PCs and how you could use them so please stay tuned for the next video. And if you're interested you can find a product link down below in the description. As I've said, there are newer models and I will try to get the new and fastest models as soon as possible to review them for you guys and we will also sell them in our shop when we open up next month. Okay, so we're now at the end of this review. I hope you enjoyed it guys and as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you again in my next videos. Bye bye!